I thought, I thought we were going to start. I heard a rumble of the drone. Good to see you all. Lift right up to me. Good to see you. And welcome to Sacred Ground. It's about 11 o'clock. And uh, we're going to have an announcement of two. Just some very, very short announcements. Thank you from my heart for all that helped in one way or the other distribute Thanksgiving boxes yesterday. I know a lot of people gave money or gave food or gave time or hung out at the fire department and uh, gave the boxes away. How many boxes did we give away? 73. 73 boxes of food. Bob's going to have a birthday? In three days, well, happy birthday to you. <laughs> Kelly, where's Kelly? She's got some. Okay, other announcements. So thank you, everybody. Mary? Oh, thank you for Just to add to the thank yous, on Wednesday, we packed 68 Christmas shoe boxes yeah. and took them to the First Baptist Church of New York. And then the ladies went to Chalet and had lunch. It was a lovely time. And we thank everybody that helped pack and donate things to it. And next year, our goal is 70 boxes. And we would also like for $6 extra a box, they can have a Bible in their own language installed wow. in it. That's really important, as well as a Sunday school thing that they do and they get to attend the Sunday school thing. So rather than increase boxes a lot, please think about that. Six dollars a box will get them a Bible in their own language and an invitation to the Sunday school class that they hold. So uh, that's our goal for next year. Wow, that's great. That's awesome. Thank you very much. And by also way of announcements, we will have a business meeting following our service today. We deferred it from last week because we were so busy with stuff. And uh, so after our service today, we will have a business meeting. And just for, for thought, we're, we're thinking about Christmas because Christmas is on December 25th, which is a Sunday. So just think about that and we'll try to talk about it. So we also will be having after church, um, we will be selling Christmas cards yes. um, as a, a fundraiser for the youth. So we're going to be selling uh, packs of 12 cards for $10 each. So we'll have them out after church and the following Sundays. So if you guys want to get some Christmas cards, then um, you can find them here. Very good. And Thanksgiving is this coming week. And Veronica is going to be going away to be with her parents. Uh, uh, so she's leaving on Tuesday. And then she's flying to Curacao to be with Kenny. And we're praying for that boy to get here. Hi, yeah. Kenny, if you're watching. And uh, we're praying for his release. And look at the ministry that's already started with the kids. So we love to have the kids here. So pray for Veronica. Marie, would you like to come up and start us in prayer? Oh, and here's a here's a uh, offering plate. Sometimes people ask me about it, and I'm going to do communion when we're done. Oh yes, one more thing. There will be a funeral service here on Saturday, and do you want to come up and talk about that? Saturday uh, about one o'clock or two o'clock. <laughs> but she, Jan knows all about it. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hold the mic. I am. <laughs> but I'm not the I am. I'm just <laughs> holding the mic. Anyway, um, Saturday, this coming Saturday, 1 o'clock, here, we are holding a memorial for Rochelle McAlpine. Um, she was earlier a part of our church. She was baptized here. Um, she was very active in the food share program. At Selects when it began. So we're asking for donations of food items rather than flowers or, or gifts or whatever um, as a way of thanking her for her time, but most giving love and care to her family. Adam and Cheryl Posey are her children. Um, they're in their mid 30s now. They were my foster kids. And uh, so there's still foster kids, and so I'm just asking anyone that 
that could come and share or just show support for the for the family. Uh, they are really hoping to see a lot because they don't live in the area, so they're coming from far away, and they'd like to see everybody that they used to see. So thank you so much. Again, next Saturday at one o'clock here. Thanks, Jen. Okay, let's see. I'm going to do that too. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I thought it was good to start that way. Heavenly Father, let's pray, guys. Let's ask the Lord to come. Lord, we're going to ask you to come into our meeting. Of course, you're already here because you are here with us always. But Lord, I just pray that we would be able to worship you with all our heart, with all our strength, with all our might. That Lord, you would give anointing and inspiration to our band, our music team. Lord, that we come in court before you and to your throne, Lord, and that our heart will be, that we worship you with all our heart, Lord, and I just pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Okay, we'd like to call kids to the drum. We already have some up there. Are there any more kids? That I don't see any more. So did you guys do a little practice, you know what you're doing, and you're all ready to roll? Okay. Well, our Lord is a warrior, right? Yes. That's what this song's about. Lord is a warrior. The Lord is...
a dancer. Yeah. David used to dance before the Lord all the time. I did. Yeah. David? I did. He probably still could. <laughs> We're here to worship the Lord this morning and, and to hang out together, build each other up empower one another, equip one another, seek the Holy Spirit, and may He quiet our spirits now so that we can hear His voice, draw closer to Him, let our hearts meld together. In the secret, in the quiet place, Shame is a prison. As cruel as the grave. Yes. If you've given your life to Jesus Christ, shame has no place in you. He took that from you. Some of us need to realize that on a daily basis. But he loved us so much that he took that for us. He took it for us. So if you're feeling any shame over your past or anything, you rebuke that in the name of Jesus. And that place that's just been empty, you ask Jesus to fill that place with his Holy Spirit. Okay? Oh, shame is a prison As cruel as the grave Shame is a robber And he's come to take my name But love is my redeemer Lifting me up from the ground
day's coming. You know that day's coming. And if we're in the grave, we'll come out of it. And if we're not in the grave yet, we'll just disappear. We're gone. Is this your song? Where are you leading in? Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. In heaven, the armor will enter the land. The battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned against the
Instruments of worship. You know, that's what we're called to be. Instruments of worship. Even in our daily walk, not just here, but wherever we are. We're called to be instruments of worship. No way I'm going to pay six dollars for that. And so I scanned it first and it came up two nights ago. I didn't that. So I have a new notebook and uh, I'm trying to find my place. Here we go. I tested this message in the pole barn yesterday morning. I found that it kind of works for me because I spend all my time taking notes and reading the Bible and accumulating stuff. And I was like, how am I going to filter that into something? And so I find when I go to the pole barn, I can turn on the camera and say, okay, here we go. And I caught myself in an error, and Jan pointed that out to me. So she watched the pole barn version. <laughs> There's been a handful of people that have watched it. And what I said was, we were going to study the, the book of Joshua, which is true. But I said it was the fifth book of the Bible, which is not true. It's the sixth book. So I was wondering how many people would point that out. And Jen, of course, pointed it out. She by the way. And what I was thinking was, like, there's four Gospels, and then there's the book of Acts. So there's four books, and Acts is the fifth book. Joshua is kind of like the next book after the five books of the Pentateuch. And so that's where we we're going to go. And uh, I like to call this Step into the Water. Step into the Water. And as I went into the pole barn yesterday, the sky was brilliant with stars, and I heard the 
Kelly calls them the jingle, jingle cricket, jingle breast crickets. You know how the jingle breasts go at the powwow? They make that sound. Well, don't the crickets kind of sound like that? And so they were making their full noise, and the stars were great. And uh, I went into the bar, and it was cold. I turned on the fire and all, but it was nice. Yeah, had my hat on. They couldn't see my bald head. But Father, uh, we pray that this morning your message would ring loud and clear through me. I thank you for your word. And I thank you for every person that's here and every person who may be watching in the digital world, maybe online right now. Lord, there's tragedy all around us, but you are the peace in our storm, no matter what we're going through, Lord. And I pray that your peace would come and inhabit the land and inhabit the people yes, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so please turn to Joshua with me. And it is the sixth book of <laughs> the Bible. I know that some people teach um, line by line, and I like that style. But I'm trying to preach a book at a time, which is kind of a challenge. And I figure if I do that, then I'll have at least two years of preaching through the Bible. So that's kind of my method. And so turn to Judges, I mean to Joshua. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. It's, it's Judges and Joshua. And this is called Step Into the Water. Remember the song, Joshua Fought the Battle of Jericho? Yeah. We had a little song come up this morning in prayer. It's just a simple song, but Joshua Fought the Battle of Jericho, Jericho. And the walls came tumbling down. Well, do you remember, who remembers the Elvis Presley song? It was released like in 1960. And he says, Joshua fit the battle. And I couldn't figure out, why does he say Joshua fit the battle? Well, it was Elvis Presley, but he made a song out of this hymn, basically. And he sang, Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. And I looked it up, and it, that song was assumed to be written by slaves in the 1800s. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, so he took it from that. And I got that information from Country Thun Daily. <laughs> and I remember as a boy growing up in, in Idaho, my father, Ellis, used to work for a radio station, KFXD. And I remember specifically he brought home singles at one point, 45s, and I don't know if it was a Christmas present or what, but one of them was an Elvis Presley single, and it was on the one sign, I love this, Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog. And I think it was the B side, I think the A side was Don't Be Cruel, but I didn't really care about that. And I seem to remember in my memory something about mud, but it could have been another 45. But anyway, uh, we had a 45 from Elvis Presley back in the day. So Joshua fought the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down, and that's what we're going to talk about. Joshua, his name, he was first called Hoshea, Hoshea, and that name means salvation. So Moses changed his name to Joshua, which means the Lord saves. And who else has the name the Lord saves or salvation? Anybody know that? It's Jesus, Yeshua. It means the Lord saves, salvation. So Yeshua, the Greek form is Jesus, so that's why we say Jesus today. So Joshua also means the Lord gives victory. And he, in fact, did give victory through Joshua. Now, I've mentioned this before, but still one of my favorite modern day clips is from the funeral of Billy Graham. I don't know if you've watched this, but one of his daughters, Ann Graham Lotz, it's L-O-T-Z, I, I thought Lot in my making it up, but it's Lotz. She compared her dad, Billy Graham, to Moses at the funeral. And she did that because Moses brought many people to freedom from slavery. But Moses was not allowed to cross over into the promised land. That job was given to Joshua. And he was very accustomed to being second in command. I, I love that. I, I personally like that position. But he was ready to take the commission. And he was told another song to be bold and to be strong. Remember the song, be bold and be strong, banish fear and doubt. For the promise of the Lord is to bless you going in and to bless you coming out. Rejoice! 
And I can do the rejoice part pretty easy because I'm used to singing songs and kind of more of a song guy than a preacher. But be bold and be strong. So during this funeral, Andy Graham Watts said of Billy Graham that he was much like modern day Moses because like Moses led millions out of slavery into freedom, so did Billy Graham, did he not? Brought people to salvation. And she called him a great liberator as Moses was. And Ann Graham talks about Billy Graham in his older years, how he loved to hear God's word. And she said that her mom used to just read the Bible, and that was it, they'd pray, and that was be, that be done with it. But her dad used to in, inject stories. And so in his latter years, he'd like to have Ann Graham come and read from the Bible and preach like a 60-minute sermon each time. <laughs> and she said it eventually turned into a 5- or a 10-minute sermon, which I can appreciate that because he got older and his hearing got worse. But um, here's the interesting part, and the reason I'm bringing it up, is God took Billy Graham home on February 21st, 2018, and she was urged to look up that date, and she found out that on that same day, those of the Jewish faith focused on the death of Moses. So they passed away on the same day. And Anne Graham Watts calls it a heavenly shot across the bow of the church to wake up church, wake up world. As she said, wake up Anne, and I could say, wake up Scott, or wake up Kelly, or any of you, put your own name in there, wake up. Could it be that next in our world, God is sending Joshua, Jesus, to take us into the promised land? Billy Graham led millions onto the, into the salvation, but he was not allowed to lead us into the heavens. Maybe Jesus himself is coming. So wake up, church. And as she's saying that, a white dove flies. You're watching the video from the right to the left, and they're at this property where there's this big barn with a cross on it. And as she's saying these words, a white dove comes and flies over the background. It's just amazing. And you don't see that when you're watching the, you have to watch it at the end and they've got a circle on it so you can actually see it. So I would urge you to look that up. But Jesus is coming. There is hope for tomorrow. This is not their, this is not all there is right here on earth. The best is yet to come. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So the white dove is amazing. I look it up. Kelly suggested I play the video and we'll let you watch it better. You can go look it up. Type in Ann Graham Watts White Dove, and I bet you'll find it. So another thing that is amazing is this crossing over of the new generation of Israelis into the Promised Land. So now all the originals, including Moses, were dead. The people that, who were grumbling and didn't have faith, they died in the wilderness because they gave in to fear. The people gave in to fear. They said, we can't. There's giants. And so God said, okay, you won't. <laughs> Joshua and Caleb, the two that had the faith. And do you remember when I talked about the elders, Eldad and Medad? They were humble enough to where they wouldn't even present their names to be picked as elders. They were humble enough. And God says, I like that attitude. I'm going to make you an elder anyway, and I'm going to put my spirit on you. And the other prophets prophesied, but it stopped, and they died in the wilderness. But these two who had faith crossed over, and they prophesied of the Lord. In fact, one of the prophecies that they're said to have had was regarding the last day's war involving Gog and Magog. But their names were Eldad and Medad. So they were alive, this new generation, crossing over into the Promised Land. These were people of faith. And they were about to witness another mighty miracle. But first, what did they have to do? Step into the water. Take the first step. The water being the River Jordan. It was the eastern boundary protecting Jericho. It was a fortified city in the Promised Land. And the Promised Land was a land flowing with milk and honey. And it was promised by God to His people. So if God says, I own everything and I'm giving this land to you, don't you think that's accurate? And so he says, go. But you have to step into the water. 
So if you've turned to Joshua, scoot over to Joshua 3, chapter 3, and we're going to read verses 1 through 4. It's called Crossing the Jordan. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shechem and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the priests who are Levites carrying it, you are to move out from your position and follow it. And then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about a thousand yards between you and the ark. Do not go near it. I think I heard some, something this morning about going to a place where we've never been before. So these are the instructions. And I also take note of a thousand yards. He says, keep a thousand yards. I used to think, and I, I still think it's okay, when we die, we, we enter into eternity where time is no more. Another perspective is, well, there's also the thousand-year period of Christ, and then eternity. And I, I never really thought about it that way before. But it's interesting that he says, keep about a thousand yards apart from the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant. So verse number five, Joshua said, told the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. And Joshua said to the priests, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel, so that they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, God says, I'm going to be with you like Moses. At one point, didn't the people listen to Moses? It says, we'll do whatever you say. And they didn't really obey Moses that well. And I'm thinking, so Joshua's got that promise. <laughs> the people will be with you, Joshua. No, not so much. Verse number nine, Joshua said to the Israelites, come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites. Kelly said this morning, are there really parasites in the Bible? It's the Perizzites. The Girgashites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. See, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Now then, choose 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe, and as soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand in a heap. They had to take the first step, and it was at flood stage at this point. The, the river was raging. It, it would be like... I read that at flood stage, the Jordan could be as much as a mile across. And at normal times during the summer, kind of like our sluts, 10 feet, you know, 20 feet across, you could walk out easily. But this is at flood stage, and, they, and, and God tells them to go, you're going to cross the river, but they had to take the first step. So verse 14, when the people broke up to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them and now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest yet as soon as the priests who carried the ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge the water from upstream stopped flowing it piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarathon while the water flowing down to the sea of the Arabah the salt sea was completely cut off so the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. Isn't that amazing? Only God can do that. You know that. I mean, think about it. If the waters had to stop 20 miles away, how could you calculate, okay, I gotta, I gotta pile them up in a heap now 
For when they cross the Jordan, as soon as they step into the water, the water's got to stop. So how could you calculate that? But God, I try to do it on my daily walk with my dogs. I need 5,000 steps, so I might have 800 steps so far just in my daily walks. So I got to figure out, okay, how far do I have to go to get halfway to where I turn around? And I'm trying to figure it out, and it's hard. Well, think about having to stop the river 20 miles ahead of time because he knew that the people were going to go. Now, if he knew the people weren't going to go, he wouldn't have had to stop the waters. So did he know what was going to happen? Yes. But was it their choice? Yes. Figure that out. But he piled up the waters in Adam, which is kind of neat. And you remember, too, nothing happens unless they step in. And I was talking to Mike Harden. He's the one who's come here and helped us with our sound and stuff. And we were talking about marketing. And I, I just, I really don't like to bark at the radio station. I have, I have not been much one for promoting. But he says, I was talking to somebody, and he says, you know, a terrible thing happens when you don't market or you don't promote. Nothing happens. I go, well, that's a good point. So nothing would happen unless they stepped into the water. So all the people crossed over on dry land, and the priest carrying the ark set out, and the waters, when they stepped out of the, the river, the waters began to flow again. So they crossed on dry land when they stepped out, the flood stage returned. Interesting to note that the ark, representing the presence of the Lord, that God was right there with them even in the middle of the danger. You think it was dangerous to be in the middle of that river, that flood stage? But God was right there. It's not like, I'm not going to abandon you. There's a greatness of the testimony of the Lord too because He could have just opened it up. Right. And the Israelites of Joshua would have seen the glory of God. But now people 20 miles up to Adam, like what's happening? all the way down 20 miles oh. below where Joshua is Good point. At, the, at the sea. Good point. I mean, this is a 40 mile wide dry river for a testimony to every village, every... I mean, this is a huge, this is huge. healing of the Lord. And, and what's huge is that God is right there with us. Yeah. In the midst of the danger, in the midst of whatever we're going through, He's yeah. with us. He's right in the midst of us. The song says that He goes before us. He stays with us. He's behind us. He's beside us. He's all around us. He is for us. He is for us. And now is the time, right now, in this day, for His grace and mercy. Right now is the time. Let's read uh, chapter 4. Turn to chapter 4, verse 18 through 24. Chapter 4, 18, it says, And the priests came up out of the river, carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. No sooner had they set their feet on the dry ground that the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and ran at flood stage as before. And on the tenth day of the first month, the people went up from the Jordan and camped at Gilgal on the eastern border of Jericho. And Joshua set up at Gilgal the twelve stones that had taken out of the Jordan, and he said to the Israelites, in the future, when your descendants ask their fathers, what do these stones mean? Tell them, Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan just what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. He did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. So to your point, David, all of the world, I mean, it could have just been a crossing. The people upstream would have had no idea what was going on. But all of the people know. And we know it today, to this day, all of the people. So it mentions the 10th day of the month. Oh, there's also circumcision in there. This new generation of believers was circumcised, signifying covenant, a consecration to the Lord. And circumcision marked every male as a son of Abraham, bound to the service of the Lord and a prerequisite for the Passover. I have two daughters, and one of my daughters asked me once, Dad, what is it? 
what is circumcision? So I had to tell her. It's, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, on the 10th of the day of the first month, the people went up from the Jordan and camped at Gilgal, and on the 14th day, they celebrated Passover. So guess when Jesus entered Jerusalem to die on the cross? The 10th of that month. Like the lamb coming in, like the people were to choose a lamb on the 10th of the month. He entered on the 10th of the first month, and guess when he was actually killed? On the 14th, on Passover. Jesus on the cross. His own blood saves us from death. And it was even marked back then, the same types of days. And by the way, the manna of the wilderness, you know how God fed them with manna? On the day they crossed over, the manna stopped. They could eat of the produce of the land and the produce of Canaan. Okay, so my mission on going through these books is to find Jesus in all the scriptures, in every book of the Bible. So this is, this is what I really love. Besides that, a miraculous crossing. Turn to chapter 5 in Joshua. And we're going to read 13 through 15. And it's called in my Bible, The Fall of Jericho. They crossed the river. They took the first step. They saw the waters get stopped. And then this is called the fall of Jericho, verse 13 of chapter 5. Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? So he was already being a little bit bold. I mean, I think I'd be scared. You see a man... A big man in front of you with a drawn sword, and I'm going to approach him? Ooh. But the, the man said, neither, in verse 14, he replied. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked him, What message does my Lord have for his servant? So the commander of the heavenly armies is there. What did we sing this morning? I didn't coordinate this with Dan, but the battle belongs to the Lord. It's one of the songs, the Lord is a warrior. Now some would say that this is an angel. Some, some would say, I've looked it up, and the Jewish people say, well, this was Gideon. But they don't even believe in Jesus as a Messiah. I'm thinking this was the angel. This was God himself. And he was there to win this battle. He was right there with a flaming sword drawn. And, and he says, take off your shoes for you're on holy ground. And didn't God say that to Moses through the burning bush? And Joshua, as he fell down to worship, the angel didn't say, no, wait, don't worship me. He received it. So I think this is Jesus himself. So you want to know where Jesus is in the Old Testament? He's right here. Joshua 5. 13 through 15. So Joshua said, I'm at your command. And so I can imagine the angel saying, Jesus saying, okay, you want to help? <laughs> All right, here's what you do. March around the city and blow your ram's horn. Do that every day. And then on the seventh day, you march around the city seven times and everybody shout. And so they did that. Like, you want to help? Okay, so they did that. They were obedient and the walls came tumbling down. And says Israel marched straight in. But it's just, I, I think that's kind of humorous. What can we do, Lord? Okay, you want to do something? <laughs> it's, isn't it the same way with us? I mean, God can do whatever He wants. But what do you want us to do? Now, also in this story of Joshua, and I'll wrap this up pretty soon, I'd like to take communion. But there's the story of Rahab, the harlot. And there's the story of Achan, and I think there's two stories that are appropriate for us today. Rahab the harlot, some call her an innkeeper, but as Colleen, my prayer partner, points out on the air, the New Testament calls her a prostitute. She was a harlot. And she had great faith in the God of Israel. She protected the two spies that had faith. She hid them and told the people who were looking for them, yeah, they went that way. And she was actually hiding them. So she had great faith. She turned to the Lord. 
She kept her eyes on Jesus. She, she didn't allow her past to draw her down. She, can't, she didn't say, oh, I'm just, you don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've done. She decided to look ahead and put her faith in God. Achan, on the other hand, God said, when you conquer the people, don't take any of the loot. Don't take any of the stuff for yourself. It belongs to me. Well, what did Achan do? When they were conquering the land, he uncovered this bounty and he sees this beautiful robe. I mean, it must have been beautiful. And some silver and some gold. And his temptation was overwhelming. And his disobedience kicked in. And he says, nobody will know. And so apparently he was unfaithful and he paid the price with his life. And in fact, his family's life. They, they perished. So there's two examples. One, don't look at your past. Put your faith in the Lord. Two, be obedient to Him as best you can. But once you, if you are disobedient, repent. Turn away from it. And apparently He didn't. Maybe it was just too late for Him. But two examples. There's also a third example I didn't bring out in the pole barn, but it's pretty cool. In the book of Joshua, the sun stands still. Yeah. Yeah. And so God is the king of the universe who can command the waters, can command the sky, and wake up people. He's coming back. God has given Jerry Chapman a song called Wake Up, Sleeping Giant. And he was here last week. That's part of the reason we didn't have a business meeting. And that was given by a prophetic word delivered by Billy Graham. I mentioned Billy Graham earlier. Wake up. It was a, a word delivered to the Native American people. Wake up, sleeping giant. Wake up. Wake up, everybody. Jesus is going to return. It's going to happen before we know it. The choice is ours. Is it not? He's given us the choice. Now is the time for grace and mercy. And that's why I wanted to share communion with everybody. We have the choice. And we need to accept the grace and the peace that He gives. And how do we do that? But we were to share together. And I'm so glad that Ron and Ruthie are here. Normally, he would prepare it. And I just, this morning, went and got the pre-made cups. But I wanted to share communion. Um, could I have some volunteers to pass this out? Ron? I only got one plate, so Dan can help. Ron, come on. And as they pass out the elements, we all, go ahead, um, we all know what this is like. There's a little wafer on the top and a, a cup of juice on the bottom. So let's pass it out. Everybody take one. We do this at the radio station sometimes. Colleen comes in and unloads her little cups. And uh, we were taking communion on the radio and I said to the people listening, you don't, you, you don't have to have a cup. You can take a piece of bread or a cracker or some juice, and Kelly said she was listening in Celeste online, and she partook with us. I thought that was pretty cool. So Jesus said, when you do this, remember me. We're not going to have a meal today. We'll have a business meeting, but I guess this will be our, our meal. <laughs> Scott, while they're passing those out, there's a historical thing on uh, Jericho that has come to light through, uh, you know, uh, archaeologists and such, that the wall of Jericho, when they shouted, actually its whole molecular makeup changed. The wall dropped straight and became heaps of powder. <laughs> so at their shout, the whole molecular makeup of a 12 foot thick wall wow. turned into powder. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. it's a crazy miracle. I mean, it's. I think another thing that's important to remember is there were 3 million people. Yeah. Now, the people on the other side of the Jordan were already scared to death because they were hurt what had happened and the Lord had done for them already. Oh, yeah. So they were shaking in their boots. They were. They were very afraid. It says they had no spirit left in them. I told them. <laughs> Anybody else? I need to go up here. I'm coming. Take one of yourself. Get one for yourself. Well, take it. <clears throat> 
So Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for your, your blood and, and your body. And we thank you for whoever designed this fancy little cup. And I thank you for Ron and Ruthie, and I thank you for their lives of being faithful to testify to you. And I thank you for every person that's in here who's been saved. Lord, and that you are with us no matter what we go through, and you are able to do miraculous things for us, including save us. That's a miracle right there. And so we ask that even as we distributed food yesterday, that your spirit would be distributed across this land for salvation, Lord, to be effective in the hearts. Let the hearts of the people melt before you and bring your salvation. And so we take this little wafer that reminds us of your body and we say thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you gave your own blood. You knew what you had to do, but you did it for us. And it's been done once and it's effective for now. And we proclaim the blood of Jesus over our lives, effective to save us, to forgive us, and to remove our sin from us. We thank you for your blood, Lord. Provided for us even for healing. We ask that you would heal the nations, heal our bodies, and bring salvation. Jesus. Amen. Y'all say amen. 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 All right. Well, I'm done. And there's so. Five bags of potatoes, five bags of pork. Please grab one. Five bags of potatoes. So please take, take one if you need a bag. And we're going to have a quick business meeting. Um, anything else we need to bring up? Nope. Okay.